Assalamu alaikum, this is Suhail Iqbal. I'm here with you for a free webinar on project management basic concepts. This will take about 30 to 40 minutes. And this is arranged by Professional Development Center, NUST. The learning objectives today are the content you can say. First of all, we'll talk about a little bit about the iceberg, icebreaker then a little introduction, then some of the project management basic concepts will be discussed. Naturally, these are just the basic concepts. I'm not going to go into the detail of um, how to develop a GAN chart and all that. That is the detailed discussion, which is, is not sco in scope of this lecture. Then we'll talk a little bit about the project management processes, process groups and knowledge areas. And finally, I will conclude. Icebreaker, naturally icebreaker is basically to, you know, ease up the students, but basically I would rather like to take on the example of the iceberg in my icebreaker and iceberg is the huge mass of ice in the sea, which appears to be huge on top of the water, but actually it is much, much larger in understand under, under the water so the thing which is appearing in front of you when you are on the surface of the water is not anything compared to what is under the water so uh, what all meets your eye is not all there is a lot which is hidden and you have to explore that and this is what i need you to learn from here that there is a lot of detail you need to learn and know about in this webinar, we will naturally have fun. That is the first priority we have. But you can't ask questions because we are not online. You are attending this from home. And I am also, I have recorded this for you. But if there are any questions, you can always communicate with me through email. So let me imagine. What do you expect out of this course? Because you are not here to tell me your expectations. So I'll assume what you are expecting. I think most of you are fresh graduates. You are getting into the profession or you are still a student. And you are thinking how project management is going to change your life. How is it going to impact you? Whatever you have studied, how can you apply that in the field? And why this rising trend of project management in everything is going to help you out. Why not become a project manager? Will project management help you? So the answer is yes, it is definitely help you. And you have to really learn a lot about project management. But this small webinar is going to just give you a head start on the basic terminology and the basic concepts. Do not expect any details out of it. I'm not going to do any questions with you, any numericals with you, our scheduling, our cost calculations and all that, uh, that is beyond the scope of this webinar. So set your expectations only to the limit of the basic concepts and a little bit about the project management processes and all, which we'll talk at the towards the end of the lecture. So this is for beginners. So this is kind of a business guide to project management and you all are expected to be the beginners. Let me take the example of an elephant and his rider. You see, elephant is such a bulky animal, such a huge animal. And this does not have a lot of sense of its own and it crushes everything which comes into its way. It is just like having an elephant in a china shop that it crashes everywhere, breaks the shops, and you know, crushes the people and cars and everything. So elephant is re representative of emotions. Our emotions, if not driven properly, would crash into anything. A small rider, maybe a small boy sitting right on the neck of the elephant, can control the elephant. This rider is basically driving this huge monster of an, an animal. And this huge bulk of emotions is controlled by 
simple logic, rational thought kept by that human being sitting on top of this elephant. So yes, of course, you can control your emotions. You can tie up the thoughts and be logical, be rational and do things the right way. So that is first one lesson. Let's go back to elephant yet again. Why can't elephant break free from this situation? That is because this elephant was tied to this pole when he was too small. And at that time, he could not break away. Now he's a full-fledged animal. And it is very easy for it to break free. But it, it mind is constrained by the thought, by the experience that he cannot get through this. He cannot break open. Therefore, he never tried. If you just tie him up with any branch, he will still not be able to break, break free just because that is built into, it, into his mind. So you have to learn. You don't have to have a fixation on this I can't do. One thing you learn from project management, anything is possible. Anything is possible. You can do the impossible. So be ready to do the impossible because project management is all about challenges. In project management, again, I'll start with the example of an elephant. If you have to eat an elephant, if you have to eat an elephant, how do you do that? I know, I know. Your answer would be, elephant is not halal. We can't eat it. <laughs> right. But if, but if it was, or what if the animal I'm referring to is a halal animal and it's a huge animal and you alone have to eat it up. Complete. Looks like a uphill task, impossible task. But if you eat it one bite at a time, you will be able to finish him in a couple of days. Have you ever imagined how, how much rations you bring in your home? You no, know, kilos of bags of everything, you know, flour and everything. And you, you bring it home almost every month or every week. And in a few days, it just exhausted. You all ate it up. You are eating up the whole elephant all the time. So this is not a big, big problem. We do that and we can do that. No problem is impossible. No matter how big a problem is, you have to break open this problem into small little parts and then resolve each part individually and then join the whole thing together. This is the philosophy of project management. First, you tackle the problem, try to understand the problem, break it open. You create the work breakdown structure for that. And then for each part, you plan everything. And once the whole plan, everything has been planned, all the bits and pieces are planned, then you put it all together into the whole project management plan and execute it. So what is a project? Project is something temporary. Project is a temporary endeavor which you undertake to create something new, a unique product, service, or result. Why the project is temporary? Because we are doing something new. We are taking up a challenge. It is just like taking up a dare. Somebody dares you to do something. This is a challenge for you. And to fulfill this challenge, you will take certain steps. You will do certain actions. And that is an endeavor. That is a endeavor. You know, endeavor. You are trying to accomplish the dare, the challenge. You may be successful, you may not be successful. But this temporary effort of, uh, say, 10 activities, which you will actually try to attempt, is your project. So this is undertaken for a specific purpose of doing something or creating some product or service or result. But at the same time, there is a level of uncertainty in a project. You may or may not be successful. Right? So all the time, all the projects may not be successful because there are a lot many things which might not be known to you. There is a lot of uncertainty attached with the, with the project. So this is how a project is defined. The temporary nature of the projects indicate that a project will definitely start at some point in time and it will finish at some point in time. I'm not specifically saying that 
uh, you give a specific date to start or end, that is not really my, my argument. What I need to say is that any challenge you undertake, you have to take certain actions. You have to start doing something. At that very point, your project starts. And when you have done it, whether you are successful or not, when you have done it, that is where the project stops. So project must start at some point and must finish at some point. And naturally, the purpose was to ultimately achieve that target which you set out to accomplish. You may or may not be able to do that, whether we will decide later whether your project was successful or not. But it was a temporary endeavor, you all agree, and it was for a specific purpose. So temporary does not necessarily mean a project has a short duration. A project can be uh, two weeks long, five months long, or two years long, or maybe 15 to 20 years long. So that does not mean that anything small is a project, anything big is not a project, because projects are temporary, but the deliverables may exist beyond the end of the project. You take the example of pyramids of uh, Egypt, they, they still exist, but the project through which they were created was done hundreds of years ago. You see, so the deliverable may, may persist, may exist, but the project which was done to create them was accomplished, right? Whether it was successful or not, we don't know, but that was accomplished and the leftover and remnants of that project are these pyramids. So projects are always done to do something new, to change the existing behavior. The way the things are being done, you dare yourself do it in a different way. You challenge yourself. Why are you doing that? You are doing that for betterment. You want to accomplish some, something which you could not have accomplished before. Your, your organization wants to do something in a better way. You want to change your way of working. That is the change. And change always needs to be brought into an organization. And therefore, that the tool through which this change is brought is called the project. So projects are basically driving the change. How? Let's see this diagram. You, in your organization, at a specific point in time, which we, we may call it the current state, this is how your organization looks like. And look at the future state. This is how you want your organization to look like in future. Right? That is the future state. So you need to transform your organization from your current state to your future state. And for doing that, you need to take certain number of actions. Some activities have to be done. So this transformation is a project and you have to properly plan how you can convert from your current state to your future state. And while you are doing that, you will basically result in enhancing the business value of your organization. Projects contribute towards the business value. So number one, projects drive change. And number two, projects enable business value creation. So whatever was the business value of your organization before doing this project, after this project, your business value must enhance. Otherwise, there's no fun in having this project. This project, it's this challenging situation you have created this uh, if it has brought you from the current state, the future state, there must have been some advantage for the organization. Some business value enhancement creation should have been done there. So we want the projects to be done in the most efficient and effective manner as if there is no wastage and we may get the maximum value out of it. So for that, we need to understand project management and embrace the good practices of project management and attempt them consistently as if we can deliver the business value. That is our target. We want to, you know, do the project money in the best possible way. And that is the most efficient and effective way as if we can deliver maximum value. For that, we need to tie our project results to our business goals. Our project objectives, our project results, whatever we want to achieve in the project, 
must be in alignment with our organizational strategy, our business goals, as if whatever we are doing in the project is actually for the benefit of the organization and ultimately yields the business value. Business value is basically defined as net quantifiable benefit. What is the ultimate benefit we are going to get out of this work? This is derived from the business endeavor. So when we undertake a project, we are basically looking at enhancing the business value by delivering certain benefits to the organization. Now, now a project will yield a product basically. For example, you are ordered to construct a school. You constructed a school, you delivered the school. The school was a product. But why was the school formed? School was basically formed as if the people can study there and ultimately the education level from of that area could enhance. So if construction of the school was a solution, the benefit has yet not been realized. After the school has been constructed, it has to be handed over to some people who will run it and ultimately that specific benefit would be realized in a longer run. The school might have, the construction of school might have taken just six months, but down the road, five years, this benefit will ultimately realize. So every project is associated with some benefit, which may not be the responsibility, the benefit realization may not be the responsibility of project manager, but somebody's responsibility, it should be as if the deliverable of the project could actually be made use of. The business environment is dynamic. You see, the world we live in, the situation changes all the time. You take weather, you take the market condition, dollar parity, and all these things are continuously fluctuating. And add, it, add to it the you know, COVID-19 and all that, these situations, these are happening. They have actually affected our way of working. So naturally, the businesses will be impacted. And with every impact, we have to you know, realign ourselves. So business environment is dynamic with an accelerating rate of change. So things are changing faster. You see, about 100 years back, the way the things were changing, the rate of change is now hundreds of times more. The things we used to change in a year, now they are changing in minutes. So this is how the exponential growth of the rate of change is going on. And these things will keep happening and we will become more logical down the road. Effective and efficient, that is the key. Effective and efficient project management should be considered a strategic competency. You see, if you, you are able to effectively and efficiently run your project, meaning what? That you can not only accomplish what you say you will, but you are also able to do it in the most efficient, most economical manner, then this is a great asset for your organization. This is a strategic competency in an organization where we have effective and efficient project management. We can comfortably say that we are going to su succeed. A very large project, as I said, projects could be 15, 20 years long as well, but generally a very large project would not be called as a project because that would have many sub projects in it and people do not consider it as a project but a misnomer is people start calling it a program which is wrong this is a mega project a very large project is a mega project a program is not a large project why let me explain project no matter how big it is is focused only on delivering product service are result. Although we agree that every project will yield some benefit, will realize some benefit in long run. But as I said, this is not the responsibility of project manager to yield that benefit down the road. He will, if he is supposed to construct a school, he will construct the school and hand it over. Well, this school would be good enough to run for next five years that is in the design that much is the project manager's responsibility but running the school is not his responsibility now when we talk about programs 
programs are something which will be responsible for the benefits and a program will be a combination of a number of projects so a program what it is it is a group of related project why related project because program is has its own objective and to meet that objective we align projects according to that these projects have to be related with each other for example you have been given the province of punjab and the program given to you is to enhance the literacy level of punjab from existing level to say uh, x level to do that you may come up with ideas of many projects maybe some schools some universities some you know adult education and this and that and maybe some advertisement maybe something else that all of these different things maybe different projects different subsidiary programs or program activities all of them put together is basically a program and what does it do a programs obtain benefits they are responsible for benefits they will realize the benefit the projects within a program will deliver the product and program will take on the responsibility of realizing those benefits and combining those benefit to the program benefit and ultimately delivering delivering the benefit realization of the program so they obtain benefits and control not available otherwise by managing those projects individually because if we manage those projects individually who is going to be responsible for the benefits not the project manager but program manager take on the responsibility of these related projects and sub project programs and all that together and he takes on the responsibility of realization of benefit so program is more related towards benefit realization programs and projects but don't both kind of management program management and project management they are basically designed for doing programs and projects the right way so there are some good practices for program management there are some good practices for project management so you must do the project or the program the right way this is what these two managements ensure project management and program management whereas there is a bigger body over the projects and program that is maybe at the organizational level this is called portfolio portfolio is responsible for all the projects and program being run in the organization and this selects the right projects and programs to be done not every project or program can be allowed to run portfolio will take what is more economically feasible for the organization which projects and program no matter how feasible they are but the the most feasible projects would be allowed to start and those projects which are not being aligned to the organization which are uh, eating up a lot of money portfolio is responsible for killing those projects and programs so portfolio basically centralizes the management of the aggregate risk profile of all components so it looks at all the projects and programs running and carefully understands and carefully analyzes them and then decides which projects should keep running and which projects should be killed and even new projects which have to be introduced coming back to project management project management is the application of knowledge skills tools and techniques which are these knowledge skills tools and techniques these are the knowledge skills tools and techniques relevant to project management so if you are to be a project manager you have to have the knowledge of project management you have to have experience in project management you have to have you know uh, understand the use of different tools and techniques which are used in project management so if you are armed with these four weapons knowledge skills tools and techniques then you can apply them to the project activities as if the project requirements can be met so this is how the project management can be defined project management enables the organizations to execute projects effectively and efficiently and this is exactly the point which i made earlier we need to have effective and efficient project management so if we can somehow do that this enables your organization to be uh, to achieve a strategic competency this is the strategic competency effective and efficient project management so project management enables you your organization to do the projects that way as far as the project manager is concerned naturally now we talk about the project manager 
though we don't have much time to talk a lot about it, but project manager may be involved as early as possible. You know, even if when the project is being conceived, somebody has thought about it, if it is possible to have a project manager sitting right there, that would be fine. But if that is not possible, then at least before the project planning starts, project manager should be there because he is the person who will be involved in project planning. So this is the latest you can get the project manager involved. There is another role in, our, in organizations that is called a business analyst. Business analysts and project manager work very closely and their roles somehow overlap throughout the life of the project. Business analyst is involved, is not a project manager, is not basically you know, part of the project. Business analyst is part of the organization. So the, uh, the idea was conceived, the business need was felt, business case was developed, feasibilities were conducted, all this when it was happening, business analyst was the person who was dealing with it. He, he coordinated and he communicated with the stakeholders and the customer to gather the requirement. So his specialization is requirement elicitation and requirement gathering. Project manager, when the, the project has been approved and project is, you know, assigned to the project manager, only then project manager actually comes into play. And he then is responsible for the work throughout the life of the project and achieve the results. So these two roles, why they overlap? In some organizations, even the business analyst is assigned as a project manager. And sometimes in some organizations, project manager is assigned as a business analyst. Whereas it is preferred to have these two roles separate, but working together. But because people have different strategies, different way of working, so they may be using uh, these two roles, switch, uh, switching them together with each other. So, but anyways, if there is a separate business analyst, he would be responsible throughout the life of the project for the requirements of the project. That is, which is this is the thing which is establishes the product scope, what is to be done. And how it is to be done is the project scope, which project manager is responsible of undertaking all those activities by which the objectives will be met. Now, <clears throat> let's move on and see uh, what we have. We have 49 processes in project management. According to Project Management Body of Knowledge, sixth edition established, this is a standard established by Project Management Institute. This is the biggest standard, the most popular standard. These are five process, uh, these 49 processes are divided into five process groups. And those process groups are initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and control, and closing. Mind it, I'm not talking about phases. These are not phases of the project. These are the process groups. This is just a grouping of certain processes together from the functional part of point of view. Initiation would contain those processes which kickstart the project, which actually allow the project to start. Planning would consist of a number of activities, num sorry, number of processes, which would plan different segments of project management. Like, you know, there are 10 different knowledge areas, different areas of specialization, schedule management, cost management, and so on and so forth. Everything has to be planned in detail as if a comprehensive project management plan is created. Once that is done, this project management plan goes into execution and in execution, the, all the processes included in execution are actually responsible for somehow uh, implementing the work of the project. In, while the execution is going on, monitoring and control also comes into play. Monitoring and control also comes into play because while the, uh, the execution is going on, people are looking at monitoring and controlling, is looking at execution, and it is continuously analyzing and evaluating what is being done and how well it is being done. And they also keep... Uh, making certain change requests. 
and even from execution while you are doing things some of the things will not be possible to do because there was something wrong with the plan or there is, the situation has changed and therefore even execution can launch a change request so those change requests will be processed in monitoring and control and this execution and monitoring and control will keep talking to each other till that time all the objectives of the project have been met and once that is done then it is handed over to the closing process group which does a final audit and ultimately hands over the goods or the product to the customer and all assets of the project are submitted back to the organization so we have got these five processes in this process group five process groups but the same 49 processes which are divided in these five processes are also divided into 10 knowledge areas as i was saying the areas of specialization in which we have integration which is actually the parent of all all, all of these knowledge areas this integrates all the work of these plans all of these areas then we have got scope we have got schedule we have got cost quality resources communication risk procurement stakeholder so all those 49 processes some of them are related to integration some of them are integrated uh, related to scope and time and cost and so on so 49 processes can be grouped into 10 knowledge areas as well as into five process groups so how these 49 processes can be mapped it is shown here although it may not be visible but i in just one one table i am trying to show you in columns we have got five columns in which we have got initiation process group planning process group execution process group monitoring and controlling process group and closing process group and underneath you will see under initiation there are one and two two processes under planning there are a number of processes these are actually 44 under execution there are uh, kind of uh, 10 processes under monitoring and control we have got 12 processes under closing we have got only one process so this sums up to 49 processes on the other hand if i look at it uh, look at the rows we have got project integration management project scope management there are 10 knowledge areas are shown here in the rows and same process processes are also grouped according to the knowledge areas so we have got uh, seven processes for integration we have got six processes for scope we have got six processes for schedule four for cost and three for quality and so on so if you total sum it up it will also come out to be 49 so this is basically what i wanted you to understand that project management process groups and knowledge areas are basically using the same 49 processes and this is how the things are tied together so this is the basic concept which i wanted to give you today so if you have any questions you can email me and uh, i'll show you uh, you can uh, email me or you can email pdc but if you want to note my email address that is suhail s u h a i l at syscom pk s y s c o m p k dot com so that's all what i had to say i can't take your questions uh, i will wait for your questions but i hope and i wish that whatever i had to say was of some use to you it will benefit you in your future in accomplishments in your future hunt for job and all those things and in in future at some stage maybe again you get back to me for your advanced courses thank you very much and take care khuda hafiz